the Lord was dealing with me because I was struggling with basically having issues, you know, and uh, pick, like pains and hurts and, and different things that were going on in my life. Mm-hmm. And I kept praying to him and I was going to give a Sunday school message. And the Lord gave me a visual, like clear as day of what to, to do. And it was like for me, but it was for everyone. And, and so I went up and asked for an assistant to help me carry my Bible and like give them a couple things. And then we started to ask the crowd to bring up their Bibles, bring different items up until the person could not no longer hold anything but what they had in their hands. Uh-huh. And I pulled out uh, some money and said, all right, here, well, thank you, you know, for helping me become try to grab it, but they couldn't get the money. Cause and why were- couldn't they get the money? Because their hands were full. And so I said, this is the same thing with the Lord. When we are carrying these burdens of our of our life, when we're carrying the pains of the situations we're going through or the scars or the pains of what we have gone through, maybe we have prayed and asked God to heal us, but then we put it down, but then we pick it back up. Mm-hmm. So our hands are full because we are we are holding on, whether it's in our heart, whether it's, you know, we keep speaking on it. Well, you know, I've been hurt. I've been this. And that is the power of the tongue. Like when we... We may have given it to the Lord, but then we say, I'm still hurt. I, I, I've I, been through this. I, We're speaking that back into our life and picking it right back up. So now our hands are full with the burdens of life, the cares, the pains, the scars, mm-hmm. all of these things. So now our hands are full. We cannot receive the blessing of God. And it's not because the Lord isn't giving us those blessings. It's because our hands are too full with these burdens of the world and our life that we are unable to receive. So we misconstrue that. God's not blessing me. God's not hearing me. God's not giving me or, or you know, working in my life. And if that's not the case, what it really is is that our hands are too full with the burdens of this world and our situation that we are unable because of our what we're holding on to and what we're focusing on. Our hands are full. Our hearts are full. And we can't receive the blessing God has before us. Woo! And so that was this, that was what it was. Is, once we lay it down and leave it down, we got to leave it down. And I was abused. I was this. I'm hurt from this. It should be. I've been delivered. I've been healed. Even though I don't feel like it and even though I've been through it, I am healed. Right. And it doesn't feel good, but I am healed and I am whole. Even though I feel a little bit broken, I'm whole because I know that I gave that to God. And God don't leave things undone. And God is the finisher of his word. And he is going to fulfill what he said he's going to do in my life. Right. And that's how we receive the blessing because now our hands are open and we're surrendering it to God. Our hands are ready to receive what's before us because now it's like Peter in the boat. We're no longer looking at that wave. Our eyes are back where they need to be. Just like Joy had said, our eyes are back where they need to be and they're not on those waves of our pain and our problems. Right. 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 You know, uh, my mother... Uh, that's an excellent analogy. I know you got that from God. Um, one thing people don't realize, I think I did a video on that where I was putting things in my hand and I was my hand was so full and I tried to put something else and things started dropping and it started making a mess because my hand could only hold so much. And that's what we, we think that we can do pain management and we can hold the bitterness. We can hold the resentment. We can hold the anger. We can hold the feelings of being victimized. We can hold the guilt. We can hold the regret and blah, 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 blah. And it's piled up and we can rehearse that stuff like it happened yesterday. And when we talk about it today, something that happened 20 years ago, we can feel it like it happened yesterday or today. And what we don't realize is when something has that kind of a hold on you, you've got a hold on it. You're, You're actually holding it. You're not letting it go. You're holding it. And when God wants to put things in your life, you can't receive it because you're too inundated and overwhelmed by all this crap you're holding. And that's exactly what Davina's example was about. We have to be very careful. When we ask God to heal us, we have to literally be willing to let it go. Flush. Like I told Andrea, you're either going to stir it and stir up the stink, the stench, the the, the fermentation of, of the funk, or you're going to pull the lever and flush. And if you can't pull the lever yourself and flush it down the toilet, you ask God to flush it 
for you. And you don't stand in the bathroom and breathe the fumes and regurgitate all the memories, all the bitter feelings, and all the hurts. You flush it two, three, four, ten times if necessary until you feel it, you smell it, you think about it no more. God bless you on that one. That's called getting your inner healing. All right. Even though you feel like saying one thing, like, or you know that feeling comes up, you know that pain comes up, and it's so easy to go back into that emotion. Yeah. It's so easy to go back. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Because people are going to continually hurt you. Yeah. Yeah. So that that when you get back into that state where you feel like feeling that again or going back through that, like Here you said, go stirring again. it up, mm -hmm. you you have to be diligent when you're not feeling that to say, okay, every time I feel this. I am going to stand on God's word. So this is the scripture, you know, I'm going to use. Or every time this comes up, I'm going to immediately pray and, and change your thought process to I'm not thinking as soon as you know, OK, I'm going to start praying right now, Lord God. Or I'm going to use the scripture that, that really shows me God's promise in this situation, because now you're not speaking the power of the tongue. You're not speaking on that situation. You're not speaking on those old emotions. You're speaking the word of God. There it and is. You're speaking to God. So you have to be thinking like it's like a fire drill you do a fire drill how many times you do a fire drill before there's a real fire you got to practice it before you actually go through the fire wow so this is in our in our emotions we have to do the same thing all right i'm gonna practice okay if this happens i'm gonna have the scripture ready if i can't memorize it i'm gonna write it down and put it in my pocket hello and practice it when you're not so it's just like a fire drill when you're about to go through that fire or you know that there's there's a fire that has continuously happened do your fire drill practice and it's okay practice it so that when it does come up you already have worked it through outside of that emotion so you're prepared for it whoops there it is i said whoops there it is did y'all hear that hmm. wow sometimes i feel like i have let it go but then <laughs> it's like, yeah, but I'm still angry and yeah. I don't want to talk to them. And every time I see their face, I want to throw up. Uh huh. That's when you know it's not gone. And that's why you keep asking God to flush it for you. That's yep. why. You, and that's when. Yeah. And that's the thing about our feelings, though. Like, our feelings may be very real, our feelings may be. But are we going to be led by our feelings or are we going to be led by God's word? And that's what he had to show me is like, yeah, you feel that way. And God wasn't saying that I couldn't feel that way. But he's like, are you going to stand on that or are you going to stand on my word? And that's why he had to show me the word, because there was times I was angry or scared. And I had and I would say like, you know, or I was, you know, stressed out. And I'm like, oh, I have a bad mind or I have this. You know, I would speak curses over myself speaking oh i have a bad mind oh i have a bad memory oh i you know or oh you know every time but god said you need to watch your mouth because you may feel that way but it if you look at the situation you're not you're not forsaken you're not alone you are not abandoned i am with you i will never leave you i will never forsake you and that's 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 where we have to not be led by our emotions, but by the word of God. Right. Right. It's um, like when somebody offends you. And you can quote the word like like Davina was saying, you use the word. That's your 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 two edged sword cuts both ways. It does surgery on you and it cuts down on the enemy's uh, attempt to hurt you now. When somebody hurts your feelings in that sore spot, you know it's a sore spot. One thing to practice saying is, Lord, please take the hurt out. Don't let it simmer. Don't let it linger. As soon as you see the offense coming, Lord, take the hurt out. It's like in out, it's gone. In out, it's gone. Take the hurt out, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Help me forgive in the name of Jesus. All right. Now, you know that person's going to hit that sore spot again and again because that's their assignment against you. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, right? So there are times you have to get along with God. And just like I was sharing earlier about 
giving it all. Here, Lord, take this. Here, Lord, take that. There are times you have to sit there and say, okay, Lord, I will do what your word says. Your word in Psalms 37 says, forsake wrath. Well, Lord, I choose to forsake wrath in the name of Jesus. And I ask you to take this anger out right now in Jesus' name. I don't want it. I want to forsake it completely. And sometimes you have to do it again and again and again till one day you'll notice, oh, I'm not even doing that. And I realized I hadn't even been getting upset. Well, now look at here. God did it for me and I didn't even know when he did it. It's done. Doesn't bother me no more. But you keep chipping away at it until your change comes.